What's up, YouTube? It's Sush. I'm actually back on New World. I took a little break. The content was kind of lacking for me, and doing the same grind over grind, it just wasn't as fun as when I first started. But they added a little more content in, and you guys have been asking me, am I still going to run this Pally build? Of course I'm still going to run this. I love this build. It's awesome for soloing. You can tank massive mobs, as you can see in the background. It's just a whole bunch of fun. Once you get the rotations down, the possibilities are endless. If you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by, but if you're returning, you know how my videos go. We get right into the details, so let's get into it. Now we want to run all heavy armor. This is super important to get that extra damage reduction. Alright, now for the gear set. We're going to be looking for cleric gear and nomad gear. Cleric gear is going to be more focus heavy than constitution, and the nomad gear is going to be more constitution heavy than focus. Now we're always going to run a tower shield for extra armor rating and extra block stability. Plus, let's be honest, who doesn't want to run around with a big ass shield? Moving on to our longsword, we're going to need that carnelian gem for extra threat, and then I have life stealing on this, which is a huge benefit, so every time I attack I get 4.8% back as health. On the life staff, the main perk we're going to be looking for is blessed, this is going to help us with our healing output. I've also added rally as a gem on here, we get that 15% extra damage and healing output because we're going to be casting most of our spells at full health right before we pull the mobs. I'm still running the ill-gotten gain, I don't buy any of my stuff off the auction house, this is still one of the best earrings in the whole entire game and it's free. Now I'm pretty much just looking for the stats right now until I get my end game gear, but Hardy is also really good. For the amulet we're going to be looking for health, this is going to be a huge boost to your maximum health allowing you to take more hits from enemies. Now if you do want to socket some gems, you can go for the opal or you can go for the onyx. I would go with the onyx because most of the damage is going to be physical damage in the dungeon, but there is some elemental. Before jumping straight into the dungeon, you should come to Shattered Mountain and check out these two locations. They have a ton of mobs that you can pull at once, and then you can practice your rotation and survivability. There's also a bunch of chests in here that you can loot daily too. In my previous build, I was running 50 strength, I upped it to a 100, it keeps more aggro, and I can kill the mobs a little bit faster when I'm soloing. I'd like to get rid of that extra 9 and put it right into the focus if I can, but I have to wait on some gear. Now for focus, we want to hit that 150 mark, we want to have that extra healing output of 20%, that really helps us when we're healing by ourselves. And when you add up all the bonus healing effects, we're getting about an extra 70% to our healing if spec correctly. For our constitution, we're going to be constitution heavy, we are a tank, we want to hit that 200 mark so we get that 20% increased armor. Now guys, remember this is not set in stone, I always urge you to change it up. You can add more focus and take away from constitution, or you can add more strength, it's up to you. I mean, play around with it and see what you like. I like to keep it at 200 just because I like soloing a lot of stuff. Alright guys, this is how I set up my talents for taking. It's going to be a reverse stab build. I'm going to use Achilles heal here. It's going to link up with Opportunist to give us some extra damage output. The main talent we're going to choose here is reverse stab. This is key to the build. I feel like it's pretty broken too. When you spec into Tactician at the bottom and you hit more than 4 enemies, it's going to give you a 100% cooldown reduction on your spells. Now in the Genesis dungeon in Lazarus, most of the mob pulls are going to be over 4. So in reality, at the beginning of your pulls, you'll be able to keep 100% uptime on your Defiant Stance. Now I like choosing mobility because you can strafe right or left, and sometimes you'll be able to dodge some of the boss's attacks. Now when we have all of our healing spells on the ground, we're going to be aggressive, so we're going to be able to get our 3 chain attacks, so adding that Opportunist will help us with our damage output from Achilles' heal. Moving on to the defender side, we're going to use Sturdy Shield. This gives us extra armor, which reduces our damage that we take. Then we're going to use Elemental Resistance from Magical Types. That's self-explanatory. Now, one with the shield is an amazing talent. It's going to reduce our cooldowns by 1% every time we're attacked. Now, when we have all of our healing effects on the ground, we're going to be playing aggressive, like I said before, so we're going to be able to get all of those third chain attacks off, granting us extra threat and damage. I run defensive formation. The core group that I run with is melee heavy. Sturdy grip allows us to take more hits and retain more stamina. Defensive training is great. It gives us an extra 10% fortify for 5 seconds. Fortify is very important to us because it reduces all the damage that we take. Recuperation increases all of our healing and regeneration abilities by 10%. And this applies to all of our healing abilities. Defiant Stance, one of my favorite abilities in the whole game. This is going to give you reduced damage and it's also going to give you a heal at the end, the way that we're specced into it. Now a cool little trick is that you can cancel Defiant Stance by switching to your other weapon and get that heal right away whenever you need it. Here's a quick demonstration of using Defiant Stance into Reverse Stab and it resetting all the cooldowns back to zero. Now you can do this simple rotation over and over again while keeping the taunt up 100% and keeping that damage reduction up 100%. For my final talent, I use Shield Bash. This is a great single target taunt. And then when you spec into an Intimidating Bash, you also get 100% extra damage and 100% more threat. The first spell that we want to pick up is going to be Orb of Protection. We're looking for all insta-cast spells. We don't want to sit there and cast anything. So we're going to spec all the way down into Aegis. 
and that's going to allow us to shoot it at the ground, and we can retain that benefit. Back a little bit when they did a patch, New World took out the benefit where you could just shoot it at the ground and retain it yourself. Now you have to spec all the way down here. We're then going to spec into Bend Light. If you dodge and then cast, you get an extra 20% on your buff. So you can do this when you're casting Sacred Ground right before it. Then we're going to use Protector Strength. We're going to spec into this because we're going to be getting the buffs from Arbor Protection at all times. The next instacast healer we're going to pick up is going to be Beacon, and we're going to spec all the way down into Radiance Blessing for that extra 5 seconds on it. We then want to pick up Glowing Focus. This will extend our Orb of Protection buffs by 20%. I spec into Absolve just so I can get the Sacred Ground. Blissful Touch used to be able to shoot at the ground and retain all that extra healing, but now you can't. So Sacred Ground is going to be our main heal. This is what really matters for us. It's going to be kind of our cooldown heal that we're going to be looking to rotation on. We will spec all the way down into this to get the buffs. So the first one is going to be Holy Ground. This is going to give us 50% extra stamina and mana. Now you regenerate the stamina when you're not blocking, so that's important to keep in mind. And then we're going to get an extra 50% from all of our healing sources, which is a huge buff. Now these other talents aren't so important on this side of the tree. If you would like to change them up, then that is something you can also do, but this is what I use right now. Alright, now to switch a few things in our healing preferences. I don't use targeted healing because it'll randomly put it on a player that I don't want it to be on and not myself. When you use the target self, it takes about a 2 second lag time and I want to get rid of that so we use this. We're going to jump into our settings, go to gameplay, and then we're going to turn targeted healing off. Now all we need to do is look straight down and cast it on the ground. Now the reason why we use this is because we're already going to be looking down when we use Orb of Protection. All we need to do is cast Sacred Ground and we don't need to sort through all the teammates. It'll just be cast right on the ground, right where we have it. Here's what a basic rotation is going to look like. We're going to target our enemy with Beacon. We're going to then cast Orb of Protection and Sacred Ground. We're going to pop Defiant Stance. And then go right into a Shield Bash. And then Reverse Stab to get our cooldowns right back up. Here's some in-game footage of the Lazarus dungeon of how to use Defiant Stance to properly aggro them, and then our rotation. We're going to pop Defiant Stance, then we're going to go right into our Shield Dash, right into Reverse Stab. Now look at the cooldowns, they're going to be about 3 seconds. That's pretty much 100% uptime on your damage reducing buffs and your AoE aggro. That's going to do it for my updated Pally build, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did get anything out of this, leave a like and comment. I appreciate every single one you guys leave, I'll see you in the next one.